get the border done. This is for the traditional uh, quilting. I've got my border chalked out with one inch increments using my stencil and my pounce powder. So I've also pre-marked my uh, chalk lines where my ruler, my curve rulers are going to go. I did that just to make sure that everything was going to line up the way I wanted it to. So I started in the middle and I worked my way out. Now for me, mine are skipping two and landing on the third. So here's the center of my quilt right there. So I started there and I've treated, hopefully you can see it. This is the center, but when I marked my one inch increments coming in from both sides, the one inch increments ended up just on the outside of this line. So there's a little tiny channel here. It's about this wide. I don't think you could see it on the camera, but it's there. So I've treated that line as a line. So I've skipped one, two, and landed on the third. Skip one, two, land on the third. Skip one, two, land on the third. All the way to the end. And mine is going to end up like this. So then what I did here is I've diagonally cut my corner of my border off and I'm gonna have one more arc in there. And then the way I've positioned my arcs coming up the sides, it's gonna be the same way, which is going to give us this really cool pinched out to here. And we're actually gonna do a curve in there to create sort of this elongated diamond and we'll put something fun in there, okay? So we're gonna travel up right to the point. Now remember, you've got to leave that half an inch spacing up here. And if you need to actually give yourself a line or chalk yourself a line, you can either drop a ruler down and just give yourself a reference all the way across. Sometimes I just like draw a line. I don't really worry about the ruler part. We're all piecers. We can eyeball a quarter of an inch and a half of an inch. That's very, very important because you want to make sure that when you finish your beautiful border, you don't put your binding on there and then cut the tips off these, off these beautiful um, pinched triangles or these arcs. Because basically what we're creating here is going to look like a cathedral window. Absolutely love this design it's so elegant and I'm gonna work my way across the whole thing first up to that half inch point right to there okay. all right now I'm going to do a quarter of an inch echo here because I want to do a half an inch cross hatching in these open window looking things Good. There we go. So we've got our main ruler lines there all the way across. So what we're going to do is put cross hatching in these ones and feathers in these ones. Size of your cross hatching is always different than the size of your echoing, otherwise everything's just gonna run together and you're not gonna see anything. So same here as when we were doing the original echoes. If you follow this line, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, it matches here, everything looks great, and then as I get up to here, it's off. So as I'm working through it, I'm going to be shifting my ruler. So I've got the quarter of an inch line on my ruler on my stitching line that's going to give me the half an inch uh, cross hatch. So I'm gonna follow that up. I'm gonna come all the way up, adjust your fingers when you need to. Now I'm going to use my ruler 
and I'm gonna travel on that line. So use your ruler to do this because we're on an angle. And it may take you a few to get that eye pretty good. Sometimes you'll have to come back or go forward a little bit. I find for me, I'm a little, um, a little off in the beginning and then as I work my way through it, I get faster and faster at eyeballing the space. But if you're off, it's no big deal. You just do a single stitch and lift it the stitch or two forward or backwards. I like to use my ruler so I know I'm bang on that line. In here, and that's gonna get cut off by my, um, by my binding anyway, so I'm not gonna worry about that one there. So, see the difference? See how you can actually tell it apart from there? So now I'm gonna go this way. I'm gonna go in till the quarter inch line on my ruler sits on that stitching line. Now my hand's probably gonna be in the way for most of this side, so I apologize. Get a good hold on your ruler. Make sure you have complete control the whole time right up to your echo line. We're gonna go down, eyeball that. You're looking for about a quarter of an inch there. It looks like I've gone too far, and I have. So I'm gonna just come back, probably two stitches, I think. Yep, that's good. Angle my ruler. And down. As soon as my fingers don't have control of the ruler anymore, I've got to slide my ruler, my fingers down or shift my ruler, one of the two. Doesn't that look pretty? Awesome. So we're going to first do our almond shape right up to the tip. Cut that off so we don't get caught in it. And down. All right, then we're gonna stitch our feather motif. And we've done this one a lot in this class. I like this one better than the, um, I think I like it better than the ones where they sit on their sides, but if you wanna do the ones where they sit on their sides, please feel free, go right ahead. It's your quilt. These are just mere suggestions. There we go. I think I'm probably gonna stop and start rather than travel in the ditch with this thread because I really don't want to see it in my ditch. And it will get quite heavy in there. So I'm going to take the route of breaking and going. Actually, what you can do if you like is just scooch across. Do your lock stitches right here. Make sure you do enough that it's good and tacked down. And we can cut those after. <laughs> 